ये तो इन्नो हो गया ना गुड आफ्टरनून सर सर दस से कनेक्ट करें इसको गुड आफ्टरनून सर सर शर्मिंदा हाँ हाँ यस गुड आफ्टरनून गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीवन आई वेलकम टू ऑल टू द फिफ्टी सेवेन सीजीएचएस वेबिनार ऑन द टॉपिक टेस्ट पेन एंड इंपोर्टेंस ऑफ गोल्डन आय टुडे वी हैव द बस Dr. Anwar Hussain Ansari, he is a cardiologist from Sardarjung Hospital, and uh, uh, he will discuss the importance of uh, he will discuss the uh, symptoms and the condition that are associated with chest pain and the importance of every diagnosis of the condition, and uh, uh, and the and why we should focus on the first important uh, diagnosis and uh, the timing of the uh, symptoms. Uh, so uh, we may start now okay thank you uh, am i audible yes sir yes sir that's it now let us start uh, uh, i am dr anwar sen ansari uh, from uh, sadaram hospital cardiology department and i first of all thank the cghs officials for giving me this opportunity for this presentation and welcome all the cghs beneficiaries for this presentation the topic for presentation is chest pain the importance of golden hour now the objectives of this webinar is uh, the audience at the end of the presentation the audience will be able to enumerate different causes of chest pain distinguish cardiac from non cardiac chest pain because cardiac chest pain is serious it is an emergency condition whereas other there are other causes of chest pain which may not need so much of attention but uh, ignoring a cardiac chest pain may be life threatening and the, to understand the urgency to seek medical help in cases of chest pain of cardiac origin and what the person should take important measures the person should take in cases of suspected heart attack or chest pain of cardiac origin now there are some misconceptions uh, among the people some people might think that uh, i'm okay and uh, i don't have anything to worry because uh, i don't have any problem i don't have any chest pain but that is not all because without any symptom you can have a heart attack without any uh, risk factor also and even people in teenagers teenagers which are school going they are also suffering heart attacks nowadays and a woman might think that being female protects her from heart disease and if a young, young people might think that they are not old enough to have a heart attack but these all notions are wrong so coming to an overview of heart diseases uh, you should all know that the cardiovascular diseases or commonly called as heart diseases by lay persons they are the leading cause of death globally they account for about 1/3 of all deaths and about three fourth of these cardiovascular deaths they occur in low and middle income countries and uh, about uh, of all the deaths under the age of 70 years about 40% are accounted for by cardiovascular diseases or heart diseases now the prevalence of heart disease in india this is uh, state wise distribution of uh, prevalence uh, the red red shows the highest prevalence uh, you can see the states of punjab uh, tamil nadu and kerala they are the highest prevalence in it, uh, of heart disease in india whereas uh, the uh, blue ones uh, the yellow one is intermediate and blue ones are uh, in also lower risk group uh, states and the prevalence of heart disease in, in indian states have increased over 50% over the last 30 years 
and the uh, state of Punjab, Tamil Nadu, Kerala have the highest prevalence, whereas the northeastern states of Arunachal and Mizoram have the lowest prevalence of heart disease. The, in India, the cardiovascular diseases, they account for about 28% of the total deaths in 2016. And the characteristic feature of cardiovascular disease in Indians is that we Indians are they de uh, we Indians developed cardiovascular disease a decade earlier, about 10 years earlier than what is seen in Western population. And even in younger Indians, the uh, cardiovascular diseases are uh, manifested by rapid progression and they have high mortality rate. And of all the populations, the Indians are known to have the highest prevalence of coronary artery disease rates. Now, According to the Indian Heart Association, about 50% of the heart attacks in Indian men occur under the age of 50 years and one-fourth of all heart attacks are under the age of 40 years. So this should be known because even younger people, younger and younger people are getting heart attacks. Now to understand what is heart disease or uh, the functioning of the heart. The heart is the most hard-working muscle of our body. At resting conditions, it pumps about 4 to 5 liters of blood. And the coronary arteries, they supply the nutrients and oxygen to the heart muscle. And they surround the heart. And the disease of the coronary arteries leads to heart attack. Now, uh, to understand heart attack, we should uh, first understand atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis you know this is the lumen of the coronary arteries and uh, this lumen is clear but here there is deposition of lipids lipid like material inside the lumen of the coronary which obstructs the blood flow uh, to the uh, heart muscle and uh, sometimes this uh, there is slow progression of this disease uh, since two years of age but sometimes this uh, plaque suddenly can rupture and cause total occlusion of the uh, artery and this causes heart attack. Now, it is a myth that uh, fat deposits at old age. And uh, people get uh, this uh, atherosclerosis process starts from the first decade of life itself. And see, the, at birth, the uh, arteries are clear, but as the age progresses, there is deposition of cholesterol uh, lipid like material inside the arteries. This is called, and uh, this. When there is a gradual progression, this causes angina. But at any point of time, this uh, even the non-obstructive, this uh, is called plaque. And even the non-obstructive plaque can rupture at any time and cause from uh, the formation of thrombus inside the artery and lead to, uh, when whenever there is uh, occlusion of the artery, the heart at that, the area supplied by that artery stops pumping and therefore, there is some uh, stasis of blood and that can lead to catastrophic consequences that I will come later on. This is the uh, cor uh, sub uh, coronary artery supplying the heart and this is a cross section of the artery and this, uh, this shows the plaque inside the artery which causes obstruction to the blood flow and the atherosclerosis can affect various organs like brain is called the stroke in even in the lower limbs it causes peripheral vascular disease and in the heart it causes angina or angina when there is gradual deposition of the arteries and there is gradual blockage of the artery it causes effort chest pain there may be sudden rupture of the plaque and uh, this uh, material inside the plaque may come out and cause thrombus formation in the artery and lead to heart attack and it can also lead to heart attack can also lead to sudden cardiac death. Now, heart diseases, the coronary, the coronary artery disease is the most common form of heart disease. When uh, it occurs in coronary arteries, we supply blood to the heart muscle and the arteries become hardened and narrowed due to buildup of plaque. In the, uh, on the inner side of the arteries and plaque is the accumulation of cholesterol, fat and other substances and as the 
blood grows the blood flow to the heart is reduced now what are the symptoms of coronary artery disease now this uh, coronary artery disease when uh, when uh, it is not obstruct there is significant narrowing it takes time for the plaque to cause obstruction to the artery so for a long period the person may be asymptomatic but uh, this may present a chest pain for short period on exertion or there may be some rest pain and myocardial infarction can occur when there is sudden rupture of this atherosclerotic plaque and occlusion of the artery and some uh, patient may present with sudden death also so coming to the different causes of chest pain you should all know that the cardiac chest pain is most uh, common mimicker of this is gastroesophageal reflux disease that is gastro uh, gastrointestinal origin of pain is the most common mimic of cardiac chest pain so the gastroesophageal reflux disease is the most common uh, cause for chest pain and it causes 30 to 40% Uh, the cardiac origin chest pain 10 to 20 percent in emergency departments, whereas in OPD setting it may be lower. Percentage may be lower. So uh, the common uh, causes of chest pain may be gastroesophageal reflux disease, heart from the heart, or maybe from the lungs, or from the, even from the gallstone or gastritis, or maybe musculoskeletal chest pain. So I will first uh, I will uh, enumerate the some common causes. and some common characteristics of chest pain which uh, mimic cardiac chest pain so first of all coming to the chest pain of cardiac origin which you should uh, which require immediate attention that is the chest pain is behind the sternum or in the central part of the chest it is compressing in nature it is not localizing it is not localized to a particular point but it is diffuse and compressing in nature just like pressure sensation it may radiate to the left shoulder or neck or epigastrium that is epigastrium is the just below the chest central part uh, over just above the umbilicus is may be squeezing sensation in the chest or heavy pressure on the chest or there may be shortness of breath or sweating and crushing sensation in the chest now gastroesophageal reflux disease pain which is the most common mimic for uh, cardiac pain is gastroesophageal reflux pain is also retro uh, same location it may be more uh, after uh, meals and may be uh, it may worsen when patient lies down and it uh, uh, mainly burning sensation inside the chest the other common uh, cause of chest pain is uh, of uh, lungs and pleural origin this chest pain is like stitching or stabbing or dull aching it increases on coughing or inspiration it decreases on holding breath and it is sometimes associated with suppressed cough or dyspnea it may be sharp chest pain when uh, people breathe deeply and sometimes it may also radiate to the shoulder now when you should consider chest pain as having an emergency you should seek emergency care of chest pain if it is pain is crushing or is squeezing or pressure like sensation and accompanied by any of these symptoms like cold perspiration if you are having severe profuse perspiration then it is very much diagnostic for chest pain of cardiac origin then choking or difficulty in swallowing there may be shortness of breath it may be associated with nausea or vomiting it may be numbness in the hands or arms and may the pain may radiate to the neck jaw arms or shoulders and it may be associated with fast or irregular heart rate this uh, this figure shows the distribution of chest pain of cardiac origin the front of the chest and back of the chest and then early signs of heart attack are pressure sensation in the center of the chest pain in the shoulder neck and uh, chest discomfort associated with fainting nausea vomiting and perspiration so coming to the uh, features which distinguish cardiac pain from non cardiac pain then cardiac pain is a pressure like or squeezing sensation or tightness there is heaviness or tightness in the chest whereas non cardiac chest pain is sharp 
or stabbing sensation. Cardiac pain is diffuse and poorly localized, whereas non-cardiac chest pain is focal and well localized. So if you have a low, well localized pain, it is least likely to be cardiac origin. Cardiac pain is associated with physical exertion or other stress, emotional stress, whereas non-cardiac pain may be positional. It may resolve spontaneously at rest. Cardiac pain is uh, related with rest and uh, it lasts for five to a few minutes, whereas non-cardiac chest pain lasts only for a few seconds. It, it, it doesn't have any predictable relation with physical exertion. And cardiac origin pain may have prolonged symptoms when there is an acute coronary syndrome or heart attack. Whereas non-cardiac pain may last for few seconds or even if the pain lasts for few days, it is not likely to be cardiac Now, one of the severest manifestations of cardiac pain is or heart attack is a sudden cardiac death. You should all know that if a person has a heart attack, then about 30% people can, many, uh, can have a sudden cardiac death and this occurs before going to the hospital and this is very sad because due to, this is due to electrical disturbances or irregular heart rhythm or uh, when the heart is contracting irregularly, ineffectively and that is called ventricular fibrillation or ventricular tachycardia and this there is failure of the pumping action of the heart and patient collapses and dies within few minutes and it is not uh, it is not necessary that patient has a pre-existing heart disease to manifest as sudden cardiac death heart attack may be uh, or sudden cardiac death and heart attack manifesting as sudden cardiac death may be the first manifestation of heart attack and in sudden cardiac death may be natural it is natural rapid and unexpected and this you should know that the coronary artery disease accounts for 80 percent of the cases of sudden cardiac death in western countries and this is the most common cause even in areas where the prevalence of coronary artery disease is low so and the relationship of sudden cardiac death with coronary artery disease this uh, figure uh, uh, this uh, illustrates there is some uh, there may be some chronic progressive disease that is called stable plaque and there is sudden rupture of the plaque or there is sudden occlusion of the even non obstructive plaque plaque can rupture and cause sudden occlusion of the coronary arteries and these cause ischemia of the heart muscle and pumping failure the heart at that point of uh, at that uh, part which uh, where there is occlusion the part distal to that that uh, stops pumping and there may be some electrical disturbances in that area which can lead to ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation and heart stop functioning and there may be sudden cross uh, chronic occlusion of the artery and that part the area may have developed a scar due to the uh, decreased blood flow and sometimes there is uh, occlusion chronic occlusion of the all the three coronary arteries and there may be the dysfunction of the heart and they can all lead to sudden cardiac arrest and cardiac death now what is heart attack the coronary heart disease or coronary artery disease, which is also called the heart disease, can lead to a heart attack. A heart attack happens when cholesterol rich plaque bursts and releases its contents into the blood stream. This causes blood clot to form over the plaque and totally blocking the blood flow through the artery and preventing oxygen supply and nutrient supply to the heart. And heart attack can cause permanent damage to the heart muscle. Now, what are the symptoms of heart attack? Now, as I already told, chest pain of cardiac origin, there is chest discomfort, tightness, pressure, or heaviness at rest or for a prolonged period, more than 10, 10 minutes, and not relieved by rest or sublingual nitrates. 
there may be recurrent chest pain discomfort may be associated with syncope or heart failure heart failure is a condition where heart is unable to pump uh, blood commensurate with the requirements of the body organs pain may spread to the other body parts like back jaw arm shoulder or the upper part of uh, upper part of abdomen the person may experience shortness of breath or perspiration or dizziness or nausea and vomiting and some people like elderly and people with diabetes are less likely to experience this typical chest pain and they the people elderly and diabetics may experience heart attack without chest pain so that should be remembered and these are the risk factors the sedentary lifestyle the diabetes hypertension then obesity smoking and genetic factors these are all common factors which uh, are related with heart attack and about in 90% of the cases these risk factors can be modified but in 10% it is non modifiable so what is golden hour so heart attack the first hour of the heart attack is called the golden hour and it is the most vital time when a person who suffers a heart attack he should seek medical attention because if intervention is done at within the first hour of heart attack then the heart muscle is saved then the foremost priority if a person has a heart attack or there is sudden occlusion of the coronary artery is to open up this artery because if this artery is not open then this part will be there will be sudden there will be this part of the heart muscle will be dead within a few hours and the permanent damage to the heart will occur and is consequences it can later on lead to heart failure or heart arrhythmias of the heart so first hour of the heart attack is called golden hour and we should first uh, people should be able to recognize the heart attack and seek immediate attention now the first the most important factor which hinders person to seek emergency care is denial of symptoms the person though person has a heart attack and he sees he, he uh, insists that i don't have any problem i have only gastric problem and that and then the, the whole damage is done and the patient person seeks medical attention very late so appropriate action within the first 60 minutes of heart attack can reverse its effects this is extremely important because most deaths and cardiac arrest occur during this period however when the if the person reaches hospital and gets treated within this period he can have normal recovery of heart attack now the golden hour is the window of opportunity that impacts a patient survival and quality of life following a heart attack it is critical time and this time is important to rescue the heart muscle the heart muscle starts to die within 1 to 1 and 1/2 hours after it stops getting blood and within 6 hours almost all the affected heart muscle is dead irreversibly damaged and faster restoration of blood flow the lesser is the damage so our priority should be to seek immediate medical attention and cause and allow immediate restoration of the blood flow apart from consequences of the damaged heart muscle muscle most common killer in early period are abnormal heart rhythms that is ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation where the heart muscle contract at a very ra rapid rate but the pumping effect of the heart is not there and so there is stasis of blood inside the heart and the vital organs like brain they do not uh, get supply of the blood and patient becomes unconscious within a very uh, within a few minutes and dies within a few minutes that is why once the person reaches the uh, medical any medical facility the doctor there will apply a ecg monitor on to monitor the heart rhythm because monitoring of the heart rhythm 
during the initial two to three days is very important because patients can have irregular ventricular rhythm and can have sudden cardiac arrest. Now, the primary aim of if the person has a heart attack is to get rid of the clot as soon as possible. Otherwise, that part of the heart muscle dies and there is irreversible damage. So, even if there is slight suspicion that symptoms are due to heart attack, the foremost thing should be you should chew a tablet of non enteric disprin tablet, 350, 325 milligram of disprin tablet, and it should not be, it should be taken, it should be chewed and not swallowed because the oral absorption is the fastest and it provides the immediate relief. So, the first aid if you suspect a heart attack is to chew a tablet. And if uh, pain is persisting, you can take a uh, uh, nitrate tablets, uh, sorbitate tablet. But uh, the drawback of taking a sorbitate tablet is there may be sudden drop in blood pressure. And if a patient has a heart attack, he already has uh, BP may be low. So you should not use excessive nitrates. Otherwise, BP will be low. And so uh, best thing is to take a sprint tablet. And to seek immediate emergency medical care. So the uh, there are two methods to unblock the artery that is to clear the artery in cases of heart attack. One is the doctor uh, uses a thrombolytic drug that is a drug to lyse the clot and that is most effective it is done within a few a few hours within first three hours it is most effective but the as the time passes the effect of thrombolytic drugs is uh, becomes less and less and after 12 hours it is not effective and and most effective way to this uh, unblock the artery is the primary angioplasty primary angioplasty is a method where uh, the cardiologist he does a coronary angiogram and uh, by putting some wire and balloons and stents, he opens up the artery. But the drawback for uh, primary angioplasty is that it is only available in very few hospitals where cardiac cath lab facilities are available. So the first and foremost and whereas the lytic agents can be are very handy and can be given even in pre-hospital setting also that I will come later on. So there is one uh, pilot project of Indian Council of Medical Research in collaboration with AIMS Department of Cardiology that is called Mission Delhi. Delhi, this here refers to Delhi Emergency Life Heart Attack Initiative. It is a pilot project. It was launched in the year 19, uh, 2020 and here, because uh, in larger cities like Delhi, uh, the, uh, the window period is uh, one hour, but people may not be able to reach any health center due to traffic congestion and there is so much of load in the traffic. Uh, even ambulance may not be able to, because uh, the roads are busy and so the ambulance may not be able to bring, uh, take the patient to the hospital in time. So this is this uh, facility is bike board. The uh, person has to call the emergency number and the emergency care people in bike, they will reach the site of uh, the domiciliary visit. They will visit the site and they will do an ECG and they will transmit the ECG to the uh, person at AMS who will uh, diagnose the case and they will do thrombolysis at the on the spot and then uh, plan for transfer to the patient uh, to the hospital. This is Mission Delhi. Uh, this bike is uh, equipped with portable automated external defibrillator automated external defibrillator is a, a this can be this uh, uh, defibrillator this guides what to be done this is automated this is automatic they will, uh, this will guide the person what to be done and uh, you can follow the uh, the instruction by the defibrillator and this uh, the, the people will have emergency medical kit emergency medical kit portable ecg device oxygen cylinder and thrombolytic drug or clot buster drug. They will do ECG at the uh, site and transmit the ECG to the person at AIMS uh, through uh, uh, some uh, uh, even mobile app and 
they they will diagnose and then they will instruct the uh, healthcare personnel they will uh, do lysis at the site so that this time gap is uh, the person uh, time taken for person to reach the hospital is minimized and it can be done within a very few minutes now second uh, procedure to open up the clock clock arteries in cases of uh, total occlusion of the artery is the uh, angioplasty here uh, the doctor it is an x-ray machine uh, with the help of x-ray machine uh, the, uh, we reach the we, through some uh, guiding catheter we directly engage the artery and we see through uh, some radio opaque dye uh, we see the visualize the site of blockage and through this we put a wire and after that over this wire we put a balloon and inflate the balloon so that the clot which is formed by mechanical means it is dislodged from here and then we put a stent which is a metallic scaffold which will uh, keep the artery patent so this this is a balloon this balloon is inflated and this will compress the uh, atheromatous plaque to the wall and this uh, the hair stent is deployed and over a period of time one to two months this stent will become a part of the artery and will become embedded in the artery and this lumen will be open and so heart muscle damage will be minimized so so uh, transporting a clinically ill cardiovascular patient from home to the icu is a challenging task so uh, about it uh, if the time from symptom onset and likely outcome if uh, intervention is done within the first hour then we can avoid the heart attack and only little heart muscle damage is done and if the time period to seek medical attention is one to two hours then is minor heart damage and to, as the time period increases so over after 12 hours the opening of the artery is not recommended by lytic agents but still we can open up the artery through angioplasty up to 48 hours but as the time period increases the salvage of the myocardium is less and less the as the time in the golden period is the there is least damage and the heart muscle is spared and heart muscle is saved and patient can have normal lifespan with uh, as uh, prior to heart attack so this figure shows uh, the temporal duration reperfusion with the uh, scar if reperfusion is done within 2 hours then the myocardial is salvage whereas 2 to 4 hours the sal uh, there is partial salvage and if it is uh, as the time period is, uh, increases then there is complete scar and this scar will lead to permanent dysfunction of the heart the heart will enlarge and this scar can be a needles for electrical disturbances and can also lead to uh, electrical disturbance and can cause, uh, lead to sudden cardiac arrest and ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation later on. So there is another term which is called cardiac arrest. A heart attack, as I told, heart attack is acute myocardial infarction, whereas there is sudden occlusion of the coronary art, one of the coronary arteries of the heart. And cardiac arrest is the condition where heart stops working completely and there is sudden collapse of the person and sudden death. This heart attack and cardiac arrest are both medical emergencies and a heart attack can also lead to cardiac arrest. So the survival of the patient with cardiac arrest is directly proportional to the time of resuscitation. If the resuscitation is delayed then there is uh, the, uh, the uh, cardiac arrest is a condition which is reversible but if time to resuscitation is delayed then there may be irreversible damage and there is total death but cardiac arrest is a reversible condition which intervention is done person's life can be saved and intervention is delayed patient can have sudden death and survival rates are uh, rates are 50 percent higher when defibrillation is done early and survival rates are higher in younger patients compared to older patients and if 
defibrillation that is shocking this defibrillation that it can be done by defibrillation machine or by automated external defibrillator if defibrillation is delayed by more than 10 minutes then survival are not there and survival rate depends on the time of ability of medical help and if there is a patient has a cardiac arrest then there is no pulse there is no pulse or breath and it is a time to help uh, get quick and emergency medical help then if a person has a cardiac arrest then first of all we should seek emergency medical uh, services we should uh, call medical emergency services and remove the patient to a safer place to do cardiopulmonary resuscitation and early defibrillation early advanced life support are needed and uh, the on site cpr will be the most beneficial in the uh, revival of the uh, person and during cpr the hand should be straight and it should be done with the whole weight of the body not with the hand only but the whole hand should be straight perpendicular to the chest and we should uh, do cardiopulmonary resuscitation with the, your whole body weight so that effective compressions are uh, compressions of the chest wall are done and this is the position and uh, this uh, chest compression uh, this sequence is even uh, if we do chest compression only chest compression uh, earlier chest compression and breathing both both were done but now it is uh, recommended that only chest compression is enough for cpr because chest compression causes uh, it, uh, relaxation of the chest and causes entry of the uh, air uh, uh, breathing also so the chest compression rate should be at the rate of 100 beats per minute that is 10 beats per 10 seconds so in uh, there should be 30 compression of the chest in 18 seconds if uh, compressions are done at the rate of 100 compressions per minute then it comes to 30 compressions in 18 seconds and four cycles of chest compression should be done it will be four cycles and then uh, attempt should be if defibrillation is available then we should attempt to defibrillate either with automatic defibrillator or uh, till the ambulance arrives so uh, the uh, chest compressions are the most effective way and second is airway and the uh, we should uh, see that uh, air is airway is patent if there is some dentures or other things then that should be removed and airway patency should be maintained for airway patency and this chest compression should to be effective at least this central part of the chest should be compressed by at least two inches two inches compression is a minimum compression which is required for effective compression if we do this compression then even the uh, pumping of the heart as well as the breathing both are maintained and during chest compression if there are two persons available then after four cycles of compression it should be person should interchange because it is very tiring process so um, uh, the head uh, tilting of the head and chin lift and jaw thrust these are the maneuvers like this head should be tilted then chin should be lifted and jaw should be then should be thrusting with the, so that this uh, become the alignment of the nasal nasopharyngeal airway with larynx this airway becomes uh, this become patent so the effective compressions are the uh, um, these are the uh, in cpr only effective compressions at least two inches of uh, chest compressions are needed earlier uh, after every chest 30 chest compression two ventilations by airway uh, by mouth to mouth breathing were required but because now in covid period and other because of hygiene and other things because uh, there may person may get uh, uh, diseases from the person having CPR. So, this mouth to mouth breathing is now discouraged and only chest compressions are encouraged for effective procedure. So, in conclusion, time has always been a deciding factor in heart attack. Even though medical research has developed the most cutting edge methods to revive a struggling heart, the heart attack is a muscle crisis. The longer you wait, 
to seek medical attention the greater likelihood that your muscles become sustained damage therefore first at first hour following the onset of symptoms that is golden hour is the time where the patient should seek immediate medical attention to open up the artery and spare the heart muscle from damage thank you very much for uh, patient hearing and this is all now uh, if you have any questions then you are all welcome for question uh, thank you sir thank you for the very concise and beautifully presented uh, presentation uh, i hope our beneficiaries got a lot to learn from it uh, and uh, realize the importance of time and the golden hour in the management of our chest pain uh, i would request all the beneficiaries to keep posting their questions in the chat box and we'll take them one by one Uh, sir, meanwhile we have had a few questions. Uh, uh, I'll begin with the first question, uh, which discusses the lifestyle changes that we should incorporate. Uh, so the exact question is, uh, how can we reverse the uh, heart diseases, uh, and what is the effect of lifestyle? What is the importance of lifestyle in reversing the heart? Diseases? So uh, lifestyle diseases are very important because uh, uh, see if there are risk factors, ninety percent of the heart attacks are preventable uh, and most of the important risk factors are first is age age is non modifiable condition but smoking then uh, lipid control diabetes hypertension they are all modifiable conditions and these can be modified but still patient can have heart attack uh, even in spite of that uh, and uh, the most important thing is brisk walking because uh, walking will lead to even if uh, uh, see only heart attack Will lead to uh, is associated with uh, mortality. Even if you have angina, angina is not a very uh, high risk factor because if you have a heart angina, if it, if it is not rest angina, if it is not rest pain, then even if you have uh, chest pain on exertion, it is not so life threatening. And uh, uh, the uh, regular exercise and uh, diet, diet, uh, it is a uh, huge topic, and uh, there is so much of controversy in diet. Because some uh, they say fat diet is okay, some will encourage high carbohydrate diet. So that is another matter about there is oil also. Uh, even but now there is drastic change in the diet. Now diet restriction is not so much uh, advised. But uh, person uh, even trans fat is one thing which uh, person should avoid. Then fast food and uh, uh, this even ghee can be taken, even egg can be taken, uh, even with your And brisk walking is most important. The person should not do strenuous activity, but uh, regular brisk walking is a very good exercise. And uh, control of diabetes, hypertension. Uh, if uh, there is uh, cholesterol, hypercholesterolemia, then uh, cholesterol uh, statin therapy for uh, cholesterol, uh, uh, lipid control. These are all uh, smoking cessation. These are all uh, important steps to uh, minimize the heart attack risk. Uh, thank you, sir, for uh, summarizing the role of uh, diet, good diet, and uh, exercise, especially brisk walking, uh, the role of heart disease. Uh, one question that is also very pertinent in today's times is uh, that young people are getting more and more heart attacks. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, recently, even few news reports said says that uh, doctors are now advising CT coronary angiography for young. Yeah, people. yeah, yeah. So, so what are your views on that? Should should people uh, go for a preventive uh, checkup type CT angiography? And what what are your views? Uh, how the young people should uh, uh, understand the topic and keep the care of their heart? See, young people, especially, they should uh, avoid fast foods are very harmful. Then smoking, uh, alcohol intake. And then, uh, if they have a lipid profile, should be done at a. Uh, it is recommended that Indians should have, a, uh, according to American uh, Heart Association, lipid uh, cholesterol level should be screened at the age of 20 years. And for Indian population, because Indians are very high risk, even 10 years may be an appropriate time for uh, lipid uh, 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 for uh, testing of lipid levels. And other, if there is family history of hypertension and diabetes that should be also screened and uh, see for heart attack it is not necessary that your uh, there is total occlusion of the artery when there may atherosclerosis is a lifelong ongoing process and even the non obstructive plaque or atheroma can rupture anytime even in young people they have 
lipid deposits inside the artery and that can that only rupture of the plaque is enough to occlude and there is sudden deposition of thrombus and can have heart attack so angina can be at an old age but heart attack can be even at a young age that should be clear because people angina is different the pathophysiology of angina is different because that causes gradual occlusion of the blood vessel and that takes time but rupture of the plaque can occur any time it even in a small plaque can rupture at a younger age so we are experiencing in even in or wards we are seeing even teenagers are getting heart attacks even grandfather is okay but uh, the grandson is uh, presenting with heart attack and and heart that the, these people there the arteries may even there may be spontaneous recanalization of the artery but the damage of the heart is already done and that person they may they may not require any stenting or any other thing but the heart is permanently damaged and that uh, and uh, that will lead to heart failure and other consequences later in life and that uh, person's life is uh, affected and uh, their marriage and other social life all are affected so uh, healthy lifestyle is very important uh, thank you sir thank you for explaining the topic and the importance of monitoring of the lipid levels uh, so we have one more question uh, which pertains to medicines so you explained the importance of taking uh, ecosystem as early as possible there is question on sorbit rates uh, you said that there are a risk of uh, going into hypertension uh, yeah, yeah. Take, uh, so, so the question is uh, as a beneficiary as a layman patient uh, when should a person consider taking nitrates in a case of chest pain nitrates now see the, the taking of ecosprin without heart attack or for primary prevention if patient not having heart attack and taking ecosprin is not recommended because uh, the benefit is counterbalanced by increased risk of gi bleeds so uh, the whatever benefit the, taking ecosprin uh, for primary prevention that uh, taking without any history of prior heart disease it is beneficial no doubt but there is equal chance of gastrointestinal bleeding and that's why the uh, for primary prevention of heart disease taking of ecosprin is not recommended now by any of the uh, societies uh, but for if a person person has a heart attack then definitely uh, he should uh, immediately he should take a dispirin tablet and for long term uh, he should take it then nitrates uh, nitrates uh, you should know that nitrates they are not associated with any survival benefit they will not lead to your uh, any mortality benefit is not there with nitrates only symptomatic benefit is there so we do not advocate anything which have only symptomatic benefit but for pain relief definitely one can take but uh, while taking you should uh, be uh, aware that it can cause hypotension many people uh, i have seen they are present they for uh, trivial reasons they are taking sorbitate and they uh, don't have cardiac pain non cardiac pain they are taking nitrates even gastrointestinal pain can be relieved with nitrates and they will present with hypotension in the emergency and not with chest pain chest pain is inconsequential in that case but they present to the emergency with hypotension due to nitrates so that should be taken in uh, that should be taken care of that uh, you should know mane excessive taking but uh, if bp is low uh, normal or it is hypertensive you can take up to 3 tablets at the interval of 5 minutes for chest pain relief if you have chest pain uh, that is that Uh, that is uh, uh, that summarizes the topic so the one more question is again is on uh, uh, role of exercise and uh, uh, diet the question says uh, so that the person is feeling restless while exercising and uh, should what, what should be the threshold till what level they should continue the exercise and what precautions should they take in case they have suspected heart disease now see when if patient is already uh, on follow up and card uh, patient already knows his heart is well diagnosed and he has already been advised then he can continue the exercise till the threshold uh, that has been prescribed and uh, for a person who is not diagnosed case he should seek medical attention and uh, to know the uh, if there is some underlying heart disease and then uh, that, that's a very the heart disease is ruled out yeah yeah that they should uh, a person should primarily consider a doctor and if already the, uh, yes and if it is already diagnosed and everything is well known and uh, it has been already prescribed then you can continue 
so this is also a very important question in today's time so what is the role of obesity particularly obesity in heart disease and the oils and the uh, oils that a person should consume uh, to alleviate the uh, effects of the uh, diet that ha- that it has on the heart disease see obesity as such is not a very important risk factor for heart diseases but obesity is associated many other risk factors like insulin resistance uh, then uh, metabolic syndrome then uh, liver fat uh, then uh, pcod uh, polycystic ovarian disease and many other osteoarthritis and there may be many comorbidities patient is uh, if obese not able to walk and so sedentary lifestyle fast food there are multiple so obesity as such is not so much a risk factor but uh, the associated uh, symptoms or sedentary lifestyle and inactivity physical activity and uh, metabolic syndrome obesity uh, hypertension and if uh, there may be obstructive sleep apnea hypertension so with obesity associated so many or oh, comorbidities there are uh, all associated so hard to miss but as such obesity is not a, a, a risk factor uh thank you sir the but rest the, of the, the comorbidities are there okay. uh thank you sir so the rest of the questions mainly pertain to particular symptoms uh, uh we would advise that uh, the person should uh, visit the doctors in person so that they may have better understanding of their disease uh, i think sir we have covered all the topics i just like uh, once again like to thank you for a very detailed and very concise presentation uh, on a topic that is very pertinent at today's times thank you again sir Uh, uh thank you for all of us for joining us uh, we'll meet next time and we'll inform you on the sms uh, about the date of the next webinar thank you sir oh, okay thank you thank you thank you very much thank you all for all the participants okay thank you